Wait, will Blue Origin beat SpaceX to the moon? In a stunning twist that no one saw coming, Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin is now set to land on the moon before Elon Musk's Starship. But don't celebrate just yet. We're talking about a robotic lander, a faster timeline, and a cargo-first approach. But is this really a win? Or just the opening act of a much bigger lunar battle? SpaceX is still aiming for something way more ambitious. Astronauts on the moon by 2027, with a lander the size of a skyscraper and fuel transfers in orbit. So why is Blue Origin launching first? What's the real story behind the headline? And what's coming next in NASA's epic Artemis program? Find out everything in today's Tech Map episode. On May 30th, Spaceflight Now shared some fascinating updates on X about NASA's Human Landing System program as part of the fiscal year 2026 budget request. NASA's current focus is on a key milestone, SpaceX's Starship Propellant Transfer Demonstration, scheduled for the third quarter of 2026. This is a major step toward future lunar missions, as it allows Starship to refuel in orbit a crucial requirement for successfully executing the Artemis program's goal of putting humans back on the moon. Around the same time, SpaceX is also planning an uncrewed lunar landing test using Starship. If all goes according to plan, that will set the stage for Artemis 3, a historic crewed mission targeted for June 2027. Then Artemis 4 would follow in December 2028. Meanwhile, both SpaceX and Blue Origin continue working on their lunar landers. SpaceX is pushing toward a critical design review in 2027, while Blue Origin is aiming for a preliminary design review of its human-class cargo delivery lander in 2026. On top of that, Blue Origin is progressing with the development of its Blue Moon Mark II system, a lander built for astronauts and planned for use in NASA's Artemis V mission near the decade's end. But before Blue Moon Mark II takes the spotlight, Blue Origin has a big test ahead. It's the Blue Moon Mark I Pathfinder mission, a robotic lunar landing demo launching no earlier than August 2025, likely within 2025 if the schedule holds. The transit time to the moon is typically a few days, three to five days for most lunar missions. So the landing would occur shortly after launch, assuming no significant delays. This mission is designed to showcase precise landing technology and deliver scientific payloads for both NASA and commercial clients. Think of it as a vital shakedown cruise for the bigger and more ambitious Mark II lander that will eventually carry astronauts to the moon. So it can be said that Blue Origin is likely to land on the moon before SpaceX, at least a year sooner. However, when it comes to space exploration, delays are almost part of the journey. Nothing goes exactly as planned. Both NASA partners, SpaceX and Blue Origin, are pushing the limits of technology, but that also means they're bound to hit some snags. Technical hurdles, funding issues, and logistical roadblocks are all very real possibilities. Take Blue Origin's New Glenn rocket, for example. It's the heavy lift vehicle meant to launch the Blue Moon lander, but it's only flown once and hasn't yet been fully proven. Over on SpaceX's side, Starship has had its share of test flight failures, which could also shift timelines. And let's talk about the difference in mission scope. Because not all landers are built for the same purpose, it's ironic that Blue Origin, often criticized for its slow pace, might actually outpace SpaceX in some areas of lunar delivery. Their MK-1 lander is purpose-built for cargo, capable of hauling up to three metric tons to any spot on the moon. The 2025 Pathfinder mission will put it to the test, showing off landing accuracy and overall system reliability. The goal? A dependable lunar delivery truck for future missions. Meanwhile, SpaceX is going big, literally and figuratively. Starship HLS isn't just a lander. It's a mobile lunar base capable of supporting four astronauts for up to 30 days on the surface. But this ambition comes with major challenges, especially in creating reliable life support systems that regulate atmosphere, pressure, temperature, radiation shielding, and more. 
That's a whole other level compared to Blue Origin's uncrewed MK1, which sidesteps those complications. The Quarter 3 2026 Starship test might not have people on board, but it's going to prove one of the most complicated feats in modern rocketry, ship-to-ship -ship propellant transfer in orbit. This isn't just fueling a car, it's managing cryogenic liquids in microgravity, where fluid behavior is unpredictable. Add to that the need for precise autonomous docking and cryomanagement to prevent boil-off, and you've got one seriously advanced maneuver. In contrast, Blue Moon MK-1's design is much simpler. It follows a single launch strategy. New Glenn launches the lander directly into a lunar transfer trajectory. No need for multiple launches or assembling parts in orbit. All the fuel for launch, transit, and landing is onboard from the start. It's a plug-and-play approach that reduces risk and complexity, and that may be one reason Blue Origin could deliver earlier. Still, both landers face the same fundamental challenge, cryogenic propellant storage. Blue Origin's MK-1 uses hydrolox, liquid hydrogen, and oxygen, which is incredibly hard to store due to hydrogen's low boiling point, around 20 Kelvin, and its tendency to evaporate. That's why Blue Origin is working on zero boil-off technology and advanced cryocooling systems. On the other hand, SpaceX is going with methalox, liquid methane and oxygen. It's more stable in space than hydrolox, but still demands innovations in orbital refueling and long-term storage. From a propulsion standpoint, Starship HLS is more complex. It has Raptor engines for orbital maneuvers and ascent, and separate radial thrusters for lunar landings. That means more systems to manage, and more points of potential failure. Blue Moon MK-1 keeps it simple with its BE-7 engines, fine-tuned specifically for lunar descent and ascent. And finally, let's not forget the sheer size difference. Starship HLS is a behemoth, about 50 meters tall and 9 meters wide. It needs specialized systems for things like docking and even an elevator to get astronauts to the surface. Blue Moon MK-1? It's compact at around 7 meters in diameter, optimized purely for cargo, and built with simplicity in mind. At the end of the day, it's not just a race, it's a comparison of philosophies. Ambition versus simplicity, crude complexity versus cargo reliability. And in space, as we've learned time and time again, the tortoise and the hare just might cross the finish line together. Anyway, if you love this deep dive, smash that like button, hit subscribe, and ring the bell. We're aiming for 150,000 subscribers, and we need you to get there. Check out our other videos on Starship, Artemis, and more, and let's keep exploring the cosmos together. Okay now, let's come back. However, Blue Origin's real hurdles only come when they test a larger, crude lunar lander, Mark II. Like Starship HLS, Mark II is designed to carry up to four astronauts to the lunar surface for missions lasting up to 30 days, enabling longer stays than previous landers. The lander uses three BE-7 engines that run on liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, super-cold fuels that need to be kept at minus 253 degrees Celsius for hydrogen and minus 183 degrees Celsius for oxygen. Managing these cryogenics in space is tough because even a tiny bit of heat can make them boil off. Blue Origin has to develop advanced tech to store these fuels in orbit for weeks, especially in the tricky, near-rectilinear halo orbit, where Artemis missions stage. And here's where it gets even wilder. Blue Moon Mark II needs in-orbit refueling to pull off its lunar missions. That's where Blue Origin's cislunar transporter comes in a tug and tanker system that delivers propellant in space. But transferring cryogenic fluids in microgravity? That's a whole new level of hard. Liquids float around as droplets in space, so you need special systems to move them from one tank to another without losing any, or worse, causing a leak. Blue Origin also has to test this lander from top to bottom. They've got an uncrewed demo flight planned for 2027 where Mark II will launch, travel to near-rectilinear halo orbit, initially planned to dock with the Lunar Gateway, land on the Moon, and come back up. Plus, since Mark II is human-rated, 
they need to build life support systems for a 30-day stay on the lunar surface. Think air, water, radiation protection, and keeping the crew comfy in the moon's crazy temperature swings. Testing all this on Earth is tricky, too. They have to simulate lunar gravity, only one-sixth of Earth's, and make sure Mark II can land precisely within 100 meters of its target, especially at the lunar south pole, where the terrain is super rugged. Blue Origins got a tight schedule to hit their 2027 critical design review and be ready for Artemis V, scheduled in 2030 if NASA does not cancel it. It's a big challenge, but they've got a $3.4 billion NASA contract to help make it happen. Compared to 100 metric tons of Starship's payload capacity, Blue Moon Mark II is more humble with a payload of around 20 metric tons, including crew and cargo. Timeline-wise, SpaceX is moving faster. They've got their uncrewed lunar landing demo in 2026 and Artemis III in 2027 while Blue Origin's uncrewed demo is in 2027, with their first crewed flight in 2030 for Artemis 3.5 if everything goes to plan. But SpaceX's scale makes things harder. They need multiple launches for refueling, which means more chances for something to go wrong. Blue Origin's Cislunar transporter also needs refueling, but its system is smaller and more modular. Landing on the moon is another big difference. Blue Moon Mark II is built for precision. It needs to land within 100 meters of its target, especially at the lunar south pole, where the terrain is tricky. Starship HLS, with its massive thrust, has to be careful not to blast lunar soil everywhere when it lands, which could damage nearby equipment. SpaceX is working on special landing thrusters to minimize this, but it's a big engineering challenge. And here's the kicker. SpaceX has way more flight experience. They've been launching and landing Starship prototypes since 2020, with dozens of test flights under their belt by 2025. Blue Origin is still catching up. Their new Glenn rocket hasn't even launched for a second time as of mid-2025, and they're relying on its success to get Mark II into space. So, while Blue Origin's challenges are more focused, SpaceX's ambitious scale and tight timeline make their path just as tough. Blue Origin, New Glenn's maiden launch took place on January 16, 2025, from Launch Complex 36 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. The mission marked Blue Origin's debut into orbital flight, successfully reaching its intended orbit with the Blue Ring Pathfinder payload after two successful burns of the BE-3U engines on the second stage. The primary objective of achieving orbit was accomplished, a significant milestone for the company. However, the mission faced a setback with the reusable first stage, nicknamed, So You're Telling Me There's a Chance. The booster was lost during its descent after separating from the upper stage, traveling at approximately Mach 5.5, around 6,700 kilometers per hour or 4,200 miles per hour, at an altitude of 25.7 kilometers. 84,226 feet, before telemetry was lost. The failure to land on the sea-based landing platform vessel, one, Jacqueline, triggered a mishap investigation led by Blue Origin, with oversight from the FAA. The investigation, completed by March 31, 2025, identified the issue as the three B-4 engines failing to reignite properly during the landing sequence. 